I need to make a wiring harness so that I can connect this DC-DC converter from 12 volt car battery to 24 volt DC pump. Problem is this thing right here is really sensitive to being miswired. If you get the negative, positive, positive, negative, it burns out real easily. So how do I make this idiot proof? And that's, that's my challenge for the day. My plan right now is to use one of these BDDs, big dog diodes, also called BFDs, uh, big freaking diodes, to ensure that if the connections are made in the wrong way, that no current will flow and that will protect this device. So let's take a close up and see uh, how I might be able to do that. My current thought is to use this diode, it's a 10 amp diode and to lay it in here, uh, disconnect this wire. I'll actually be using a different wire, but uh, set this in here. So what I will do is drill a hole through here, uh, run the lead from this side out, and then this lay it flat. Maybe epoxy this thing in here or wrap it with thread and epoxy it. That's one of my favorite things to do. And then make a really good connection on here uh, with the wire and shrink wrap it and all that. So that's currently the plan. Let me uh, let me go do the next step and see how it works. And as you can see here it is soldered and like that. So the trick here was to get this as far forward as possible without getting tangled up in the springs and all that. Um, and while leaving myself enough room to attach a wire and then uh, secure it so that I have, uh, you know, it doesn't uh, put too much stress on the diode here. Before I go on, I want to make sure that this is, diode is oriented properly. Now this is not going to beep like, like normal when you check a small diode because this diode has a lot of resistance to it relative to the other. So there's the red end on the clamp and then here, 0.55, yeah, that's probably going to be pretty good. Put the black wire on the clamp and the red wire on the other end of the diode and nothing. So yeah, it's oriented properly. Okay, so I'm preparing my inline fuse. I want my inline fuse here. Um, before I forget to mention it, this diode is a 10 amp diode. The circuit's going to be 5 amps so that the diode will be well within the, the capacity of the circuit and this is one of those things that you really have to know what you're doing because if you don't the diode can overheat catch fire um, so if you don't know learn first or don't do it that's my disclaimer okay so from here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach my fuse wire onto here then I'm gonna wrap it and um, yeah so my next step is to bear this out solder these this joint right in here and uh, then bring my shrink wrap into play and put it around there and get that all done. As you can see, I've used a wire wrap joint which is relatively low profile. It's not a really strong joint, but it's, you know, okay. Now let me go put the shrink wrap on there. I'll fold this back down in position and we'll be a lot closer. As you can see back here, we've got two layers of of shrink wrap on here which is going to add some strain relief and it's going to offer a lot of protection because this is going to be a high stress area right in here. Uh, this place I wrapped with sewing thread that's soaked in epoxy which is like tying a, a fishing fly and so that's tremendously strong that's not going to give way uh, and then of course the last thing to do will be to shrink wrap this cover in place so that'll make a very acceptable clip. Um, and from this point, what I'm going to do is I'll go finish up this project. I've already done a, a video on how to use this 12 to 24 volt uh, converter. But uh, we'll go finish that up and then when it's all done, I'll do a demo. Okay, this is our test setup. Here's the uh, battery substitute. So this is our power supply set at 12 volts as you can see. Here are two wires coming out. We're going to connect those to these clamps. These clamps go down. There's. 10 meters of wire back here in a coil comes around over here to our 12 to 24 volt DC DC converter which is connected to the motor through these jumpers and you can see there I go back here uh, to this uh, it's 24 to 32 volt DC motor 
Yeah, I've got a flag on it so you can see when it's turning. Uh, so let's do that. So here I connect, get my hand out of the way, so you can see that the motor is turning. There we go, had a bad connection. Uh, we can see that the motor is turning, so when the circuit is wired properly, when we have plus to plus and minus to minus, it operates. Now let's try to see if we can uh, hook it up backwards and see what will happen. See if we'll burn it out. There's plus to minus and minus to plus. And as you can see, nothing happens. There's no indication of short. This isn't the voltage isn't dropping. Um, so everything's uh, normal. The diode's not heating up. Or the diode's packaged in there, as you remember. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, it works. Now I will say that this technique only works on uh, relatively low amperage. So this circuit is for uh, is for uh, five amps roughly, and the diode's 10 amps. So I've got a lot more uh, current than I need. But overall, um, it works. Uh, it works very well for low current systems. Okay, well that was it for today. I hope you found it useful and interesting in your home electronics experimentation.